Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Kubernetes Masterclass for today, September 24th, 2019. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, to talk about speed up your cloud native applications, our application deployment using K3S and traffic. So I am Jason Van Brackle. I'm the director of community at Rancher Labs. Uh, and with me today is uh, Manuel Saab, uh, Solutions Architect with Containus. Uh, you can find us both on Twitter. I'm Jason Van Brackle pretty much everywhere and GitHub as well. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Manuel. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Pleasure to be here with you. All right. So a little bit of regular business. Today's masterclass, we're going to try to keep this to 40 to 45 minutes. Questions are always welcome. I'll be monitoring the, I'll be monitoring the questions in GoToMeeting. Uh, and we'll try to respond to as many questions as we can. If not, we're also over in Slack. And if like you have to walk away today, this is being recorded. So you'll find it on youtube.com slash C slash rancher. And if you have any questions and you're not on GoToMeeting, but you are on Slack, you can join our Slack community. And in our Slack community, we actually have a masterclass channel devoted specifically to these classes and questions for after these classes. So I'll be hanging around afterwards over the next couple of days if you watch the recording and you have a question either i can answer it or i'll go track down manuel and ask him if, if i if i can't do it myself so with all of that being said i'm going to pass control over to manuel and just let him take it from here all right let's do it <laughs> all right the screen is yours all right yeah the screen share should be up and running it, it's up and running you're good to go Looks good. Okay. Hey guys, some organizational stuff up first. Uh, all these slides are also accessible online. So if you want to browse to, through the slides while I'm talking, uh, here's the chance. There is an HTML version on the link you can see, but also there's the link uh, crypted in the, in the QR code. So I give you five to 10 seconds to open the slides in case you want to follow them on your own. All right, so then once you decided to do it on your own, there is a quick work on like how to, how to use it, but I guess you're going to figure it. So hello, finally, to the official part of my talk. Uh, also, as already introduced, and thanks for that, my name is Manuel Sapf. I'm uh, working as a solution architect at Continuous for the company behind Traffic. I'm 31 years old. I'm living in Germany, close to a city called Dusseldorf. So if there if there's someone who knows the area who might know uh, where we live in. Uh, you can, as already mentioned, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm msubde there or on GitHub, which is Santudi. So uh, feel free to ping me. I'm always happy to, to receive feedback or, or possible improvements or everything you can think of. So if you want to get in touch, get in touch. And I also joined already the Masterclass channel. So if there are questions after, after the webinar, you can also ping me there and I will try to, to answer all your questions. Um, a quick something about who we are. As already mentioned, I'm working for Continuous, which is uh, the company behind Traffic. Uh, we believe in open source, obviously, because Traffic is open source available, uh, not just Traffic, but also Mesh, for example. Uh, we deliver Traffic, we deliver Traffic Enterprise, the Edition and Mesh, our uh, simpler service Mesh. We offer commercial support for all of our products, and we are currently about 30 people distributed across the world. Uh, I have people working in Brazil. I have people uh, uh, um, people working in South Africa. So we are really pretty much distributed. 90% of us are tech. So given our current size, there's a lot of techs, uh, a lot of techs involved. So uh, yeah, we are we are pretty solid on that. Um, but now come back to the to the actual part uh, of this presentation. Why should we? Why should we uh, use K3S and traffic? Why, what is the reason behind this? Why, why should we actually care? Well, to answer that question, we need to take a first glimpse about our own, the evolution of Kubernetes, because that has been a right so far. In 2014, Google introduced Kubernetes as an open source version of Borg, as you might know. And in the same year, with, uh, with the initial release, uh, famous companies like Docker, Red Hat, Microsoft, and some others already joined the community. Um, given this traction, the year 2015 has been uh, the, the, the first year of the Kubernetes with the release uh, v.1. 
v.0 sorry and also the uh the 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 founding of the cncf in 2016 already kubernetes uh, went mainstream basically i mean there has been lots of site of site projects like uh, cops kubeadm minikube and all of that that has been delivered and started to being created throughout this year but also um, the early adopters of the technology went uh, went out with it. For example, um, the, the the famous virtual rea uh, augmented reality game Pokemon Go released a case study in 2016 about how they leveraged Kubernetes in the ecosystem to try to make their their launch of their game as smooth as possible. And yeah, it might have been worked out or not. That that depends on how you take it. But they were the first to really publish such a huge uh, such a huge case case study, Kelly. In uh, 2017, that was basically the year of enterprise adoption and support. I mean, many many companies uh, joined the CNCF. For example, Oracle, um, Google, and IBM announced the the starting of the process of Istio. Um, Role-based access control has been has been delivered in that year. So you, you can see a lot of enterprises and a lot of features basically which try to suit enterprises' needs has has been added to Kubernetes to make this transition a bit easier. In 2019, uh, 2018, sorry, Kubernetes just started to get bigger and bigger. Many more uh, cloud providers started to to announce and actually create their managed Kubernetes uh, offerings, such as a Google Kubernetes engine or the Kubernetes engine from DigitalOcean or you name them. Additionally, Cube 1.11 has been announced the so next big milestone throughout the throughout the development. In 2019, I guess I mean you I guess you will all be pretty solid in the current situation, right? I mean we just had the biggest KubeCon ever in in, in Barcelona this year. Cube 116 just hit uh, general availability with uh, CRD support all along the way and stuff like that. So Kubernetes is just all over the world. Everyone is talking about it, and I don't think this is going to be this is going to stop soon. Uh, that being said, and taking that there is that, that there is quite attraction on Kubernetes, and we all know why it's be, why it's cool. Uh, it also has some challenges. Um, you probably all know Kubernetes the hard way by Kelsey Hightower, uh, which which sheds some light about why Kubernetes is uh, is like hard to set up, what you all need to take care on, and what you need to keep in your head, and all of that. Um, also, a full Kubernetes cluster is pretty much demanding in resources, not just uh, physical resources like memory or CPU or something, which you would need to 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 get your cluster working. But also, for example, in software factors such as knowledge, because the concepts behind Kubernetes can be pretty complex and pretty overwhelming to understand. And all that taken together uh, is definitely a challenge to do it, um, which makes it not even easier to actually test it. I mean, if you, if you try to work on, for example, a Kubernetes operator or something that really integrates and works with the Kubernetes API, um, that can be pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty hard to do. But luckily, there are the guys from Rancher, for example, which uh, which also solved this problem and actually did a solution. And as the title of the talk is uh, is actually yeah, giving to you, that's where K3S and traffic come in because that's here for the rescue. About K3S, the click glimpse. It's an open source uh, project, as if, if you don't know it yet. Uh, it's hosted on GitHub, it's in the Apache license, it's written in Go. Last time I checked, so it might be a week old, it has been 800, 800 stars, about 500, more than 500k downloads on the Docker Hub, and 50 contributed so far. Given the project being created in 2019, I guess that is really some traction, and that shows um, the need from the Kubernetes community. But what actually is K3S? Just a quick glimpse. K3S is a lightweight, fully compliant, uh, product, production-ready Kubernetes cluster, which is designed with the idea in hat to 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 run it in unattended or res and or resource-constrained locations, such as, for example, I IoT appliance, because it's already mentioned it by well, in itself. It's pretty demanding, and so there has been the need for some change. How it works, just in a very quick overview, 
um, it's like Kubernetes, it's split into two different, two different parts of the application. One is the server on the left side, which takes care of like managing the whole cluster, makes sure that everyone is, or everything actually is working. And on the other hand, there's an agent whereas an agent can be a VM or whatever, or even a Docker container, we will see this. And that one takes care of, uh, of managing all the pods, uh, orchestrating them, spawning them, just making sure that, uh, that, yeah, that your applications are running. What K3S adds and what it makes so, so good for the desired use case, given that it's a lightweight version of Kubernetes, it's way more simple, and therefore it features a super fast installation, which is suitable in lots of, of different scenarios. It, uh, it, it has built in SQLite 3 support on top of ATCD or in addition to ATCD, but it's featured um, across. It has TLS management. It has an automatic manifest and Helm chart management, which basically means that if you have uh, manifests along your K3S installation, it will just take care of installing that for you. And uh, yeah, all your applications will be right in your cluster. And as already mentioned, it adds traffic. What does this remove though to make it a bit easier and to make it even lightweight? Well, at first it removes all the legacy and non-default features, which are rarely, rarely used. Um, it also removes alpha feature. And um, what other, other scenario did it remove? There are some cloud provider features and storage drivers and stuff, which it also just crossed because it is designed to be run in resource constrained environments. So there's no need to have it. And you can even you can even remove Docker and uh, just run it plain with uh, with container D if you like. So there is some lightweightness. Why should you use it? Just again, well, it's optimized for ARM, um, so you can even run it on your Raspberry Pi if you want. It features simplified operations, which makes it even easy to run it. And therefore it's perfectly designed for the edge cases like that. The other part of the talk is traffic. Traffic is also an open source project uh, hosted in GitHub. It is with the MIT license. It's also written in Go. Um, it has uh, over uh, 24,000 stars, I'm sorry. Actually, we just crossed the 1 billion download mark on Docker Hub and we have 400, uh, more than 400 different contributors so far. It's been created actually four years ago. We had a birthday yesterday, so we yesterday hit the four. <laughs> and uh, the current stable branch, I guess the slide is not correctly updated, is now V2 because we just we just featured our newest, our newest version in general availability. Um, but what is traffic? Uh, traffic is something which we call the dynamic cloud native edge router, which is fully designed to make all your applications you deployed in your cloud accessible from the outside uh, from the outside world, and it offers major integrations with different orchestrators or third-party services. So, also a quick how it works. On the left-hand side, you have the internet coming with all your requests or all requests to your services. Um, on the right-hand side, you have your infrastructure, which can be a Docker cluster or a Kubernetes cluster or even K3S. Um, and in the middle, there's uh, traffic, which can auto-discover the, conf the, the configuration and, for example, a K3S cluster, uh, adjust its routing automatically and um, yeah, make therefore sure that all requests will hit the desired target. It also, also features stuff like metrics and tracing, for example. So a quick feature overview, as already mentioned, it continuously updates its configuration, so there's no restart needed. For example, when there is a new ingress in your K3S cluster, there's no hidden restart or something, which, uh, which is quite a game changer. Uh, it has Let's Encrypt support built in, so you can immediately grab all your nasty Let's Encrypt certificates with all the different challenges like um, TLS or DNS, it doesn't matter. It features um, possibilities like circuit breakers, retry, uh, WebSocket, HTTP, uh, HTTP2, gRPC, HTC, you name it, uh, all of this is featured. And as already mentioned, uh, it also provides, for example, metrics to Prometheus or to Datadog or whatever, or tracing to Yaga, there is, there is some stuff. And as you can guess, traffic is also perfectly fine as running in Kubernetes, 
where in Kubernetes it takes the role of the ingress controller, what means traffic will read the ingress object, will take the information it needs out of this object, like a host, for example, and will create the routing uh, automatically on its own. And when there is an incoming request, which knows, uh, which matches one of the ingress objects in your cluster, it automatically routes the request to the needed pod. So the final question might be, uh, why should I care? Well, there's some, some reason why you should care about this. Um, you can quickly run Kubernetes cluster actually anywhere where you want. You can run them on ARM, on IoT, even locally on your Mac MacBook or uh, even in your CI. Like if you have end-to-end -end test, integration test or something, it's perfectly fine to just spin up a cluster within, uh, within your CI environment. Spin up is just a matter of seconds. We're going to see this soon. Um, simple to use ingress management by traffic is built in, so you don't even need to need to take care of that. You can just take all, all your application manifests, all your Kubernetes charts, um, and it's going to run no matter what. Uh, it, given that it removed unnecessary stuff, it has a very low resource usage and uh, can therefore also be easily run in containers. How traffic is integrated is uh, pretty easy to say. Well, we are installed as the default ingress controller. Um, traffic is pre-configured for stuff like HTTPS, for example. Of course, with a self-signed certificate, but it's ready to go. It's, uh, and as soon as there is a Prometheus in a cluster, it will expose the metrics. And for example, uh, it's pre-configured to run with external DNS, another Cube Incubator project. So that's quickly done. As already mentioned, it has uh, case 3 s has the Helm chart management or manifest management built in. So it's also traffic itself is also easy, easily extendable to activate features you might want to, to leverage as well as, for example, Let's Encrypt. So it's you have a pretty solid base running, but if you want to take it a step further, you have special you have special requests. It will it will be easy for you to get this up and running. As already mentioned, there is an easier man, when, uh, possibility, which is K3D, which is a command line utility to run K3S in Docker containers, which is a perfect fit, for example, for the CI. We at Continuous, we use this as an integration test platform in all of our major projects. Traffic uses this as an integration test platform to make sure that uh, we, we can read the configuration correctly out of a Kubernetes system and that this is working the way we want it to work. Our enterprise version, and we will see this, uses us as an integration test platform to make sure that the actual application really comes up, like that it can install correctly, that it will serve requests and all of that. And in, our, in Mesh, our newest product, or a simple service Mesh, we use K3D to make sure that the SMI spec, like the, spe the specific service Mesh spec, is, uh, is working correctly. Because you, you can control access control, for example, with this specification. And of course, we want to have full control and full test coverage about that crucial parts of these applications are working the way we want them to work. And therefore, K3S or K3D is, in our case, a perfect match. How does it work? Um, you can create a cluster in about now time. You just use the already mentioned command line utility. You give it a command, which is create. You give it a cluster name. You tell it how many workers you want to have. And you publish some ports. And that's it. <laughs> then you have your Kubernetes cluster running in for, on, for example, your local machine. And that is exactly where we will be starting now, because now comes the fun part, because I've talked way too much already. Let's go straight to the demo. Um, I'm going to switch to Visual Studio Code, and I might quickly make this a little more, uh, a little more light. That might be better readable. Yes, that looks better. Um, so I quickly take a sip of water. All right, here we go. As mentioned, creating clusters in K3D or in K3S is pretty easy. 
It's just this simple command line, um, which is k3d create, the name of the cluster, the amount of workers, and the publish part. And I just hit enter. Cluster created. <laughs> As mentioned, this is really just spin up in, 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 in a couple of seconds. You can see that it created a network, that it did some stuff with like a Docker volume and all of that. But now the cluster is already working. The K3D is pretty cool because it has a subcommand to actually get a path to the kubeconfig uh, environment uh, file. So I can only copy and paste this and my, my, my local client here is now connected to my local to my local Kubernetes cluster running powered by K3S. So by now I can just, for example, as with every other cluster, I can just do kubectl get nodes, for example, where we can see that we have like two nodes, one is the master, one is the worker. We can see that we that we get uh, all the cluster information if we want to have it, like on which version we are running and stuff. So it really behaves like uh, like like a cluster so far, like like a typical cluster so far. What I want to show you next is that there is some pods being spawned automatically to make sure that the pre-configuration, for example, of traffic uh, takes place. Uh, that is pretty easy to display. I mean, we have some core services running, for example, core DNS. But here we can see that there is also a pod called, uh, named Helm install traffic, which is a pod which has the only job to do the Helm installation, the default Helm child you can also take okay, to your, well. real, real your, quick, your would you mind, uh, cluster. Would you mind making Sorry? this a little bit larger? I'm like, th I'm three quarters blind myself, so. <laughs> yeah, sure. Is yeah. that better? Let's see, a little bit larger. Even more? Okay, give me a second. Because uh, uh, on my on my 27 inch, it looks great. On my laptop, it's much smaller. That's 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 okay. that's definitely better. If you did the same for VS Code too, that would be awesome. Yeah, one second, of course. Like that, I guess. Yes, much better. Okay. Um, okay. There we see the pod. So we can quickly we can quickly uh, see look into this pod to see what it did. And that's pretty cool because K3S really managed to do the typical Helm installation. You can see that there is an installation, it is done, it is deployed, it did create the pod, it did create the needed service account, it did expose it on a service, it did create the deployment. So everything you you would like you would expect from a Helm installation is all all done by your own. That, that's pretty cool. Um, as already as displayed, it does, uh, does did spawn a service. As we can see, there is now the service traffic, which has the type load balancer, which gets the cluster IP and stuff. So that's going to be fine. So we can now hit our cluster, our traffic, or install traffic, um, to see if it works. And for this, we will just open this URL, which is in my scenario web app .docker localhost and ah, oh, that was that already works. So I have a web app which got deployed automatically. And actually, I guess, yeah, that was a fake. <laughs> it should respond with 404. Why, what should it, why should it respond like that? Um, because traffic is accepting the request. And as mentioned, it reads ingress objects to route traffic. And there is no ingress object for the web app yet. yet. So it responds 404, nothing fancy to see, just an empty cluster so far. Um, yeah, to fix that and to see the web app you have already just seen, we're gonna quickly uh, we're gonna quickly deploy the, uh, the 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 demo web application. Uh, I just need to be in the correct folder. There we go, and we can see that now in a matter of seconds, the web app will now finally respond. It will take couple of seconds. Here we go, the pod is running. So we can go back to the browser. And here's the web app. That time it's responding as it should be responding. Cool so far. Um, now we know that we like have an application running and we can we can see that it's working because we can access it. But wouldn't it be cool to uh, to actually to actually see more, and that is possible because um, because traffic features like an integrated an integrated dashboard where you can see all of that. 
and as mentioned, it's all just Kubernetes objects. So there's nothing stopping you from, for example, creating a config map object, which uh, holds the, the extended traffic configuration to suit your needs, in our case, to activate the dashboard. And that is done by just placing in brackets API because this instructs head traffic, please also, uh, please also activate the dashboard for me. So we're gonna apply this. Here we go. And what we will now need to do because it's a config map, we need to uh, we need to kill the current uh, traffic pod because it needs to rename uh, to remount. I'm sorry, the the configuration. So we're going to kill this thing. We'll take a couple seconds and respawn it. Here we go. So we can now uh, we can now come back and to show the dashboard. As you can see, we already deployed this ingress object because we want to expose the dashboard over in Kubernetes ingress. And because we are an ingress controller, that is quite cool. Um, and we just give it a host, tell it with which service to use, and we are good. So I quickly just grab the host, go on my Chrome, hit the URL, and we see the dashboard. The dashboard displays all, all basic information you need in order to make sure that that it's actually running. Um, you have your combinate, you see that the Kubernetes provider is enabled because here is the Kubernetes. You see which front end it knows and to which pods uh, it's like proxying the request. So you can check your current configuration here and you see whether your configuration is correct because everything matches or it does not. But in our case, everything is cool. You can also also see some details, like if, for example, host header are currently set to true and stuff. So every time you want to debug your, your traffic installation, because you might want to exchange your settings or something, that's the place to go. Also, it features a health a dashboard health tab where you see like what's going on. And what we currently can see is that there is a lot of 4.4. Now we can ask ourselves, why the hell is that happening? Well, that is currently intended because if we check the network tab on our demo page, we see that this application is doing lots of requests currently, which are all being served as 404. Um, and this is because this demo application calls, um, call, calls multiple, multiple microservices, and these are not deployed yet. So in order to get that nasty, to get that nasty error gone, we will just deploy the microservices and we can head back to the back end and we see that paris is up san francisco is now up as well and finally is new york so traffic automatically reconfigured itself after knowing that the ingress objects for the microservices are being deployed and it just it just works it just takes the request it starts to proxy them and it's going to be fine so um yeah when we now head back to the dashboard, we will actually see that the 200s are now rising again and that everything is, uh, is working as intended. So as you, as you have now seen for, the, for this part, the combination of, tra of traffic and K3S is, is pretty cool because with like no work at all, you can have a, a pretty solid cluster running really, really soon, which you can as already mentioned, for example, just deploy to your Raspberry Pi, use it for whatever projects you might think of, and that both will just that will just work. Um, however, that's just one part of the demo because, as already mentioned, we at Continuous use uh, K3D also in or K3S and therefore K3D also in integration test and integration test scenarios to to make sure that our application is working uh, the way we expect it to work. And um, yeah, to make sure that if we deliver software to our customers on Kubernetes, it doesn't fail and for the, it doesn't fail us. And for that scenario, um, we use K3D and I want to demo it to you quickly. Um, I now need just to figure out how I can zoom here, but I will, I will figure this. 
That's a good question. Well, what we then do is differently. I just grab it to Visual Studio Code. <laughs> um, what we have here is, is uh, just an example of how we, for example, write integration tests in our scenario, or better to say end-to-end -end tests in, 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 uh, in a solution like this. This one is a pretty, a pretty, uh, pretty important test for application. It's actually one of the most important tests, if not the most important test. Our enterprise and um, our enterprise edition comes um, in like two parts. There's a control plane and a data plane that both need to be up in order to work well together. And uh, in this end-to-end -end test, we are making sure that we can install our enterprise and in, um, enterprise edition that it will be spawned with one control node and um, a couple of data nodes to sue the, the data plane. Um, then we t then we like as we said we can we test that the installation runs through without issues at all. Then we assert that the the nodes that we just installed are are really there. That Kubernetes spawned everything correctly. That we can the dashboard as I have already shown you as well that the dashboard is actually responding with an HTTP return status code of 200. Um, we also uh, we, we also deploy a demo service to make sure that the the proxy part of traffic works. We also uh, we also access this service then to make sure that it works, um, because like the enterprise edition is built with the head in mind that it's highly available and that it's stateful and all of that. So we just restart the control node and um, make sure that it all comes back again because I mean our customers demand high availability and we want we want to do that um, so we assert the node count as well and then last but not least we just install our enterprise edition again and um, we're done I mean that's like a whole end-to-end -end test how we usually um, how we usually describe it for for the given scenarios and as you can see in the setup in the setup instructions, uh, there is something which is create cube cluster, which is, as already mentioned in our case, using K3D to spin up the cluster, like I just showed you for my for my little demo, and uh, that it just works. So we will run this test now to to show you that uh, <laughs> that we really do it. So I will just grab this command because I need to run it. I quickly quickly jump into the correct directory to actually do so. Here we go. So I just paste that and we can see that our end-to-end -end test is running. Uh, that, will, that will take something between half a minute to a minute, depends how quickly currently my Mac is. We can see that it's currently doing some preparations to make sure that like all the Docker images are there and stuff. Um, and pretty soon we will see the lock line mentioned here, installing traffic e, traffic EE, because the actual the actual end-to-end -end test really started. It's loading all the images. There we go. Docker in K3S, all of that is running now. So that worked. There we come. Traffic E is now going to be installed. In a couple seconds, it will, it will switch to the next to the next check to test, which is asserting the node counts.
Ah, it looks like my mic is a little slow, probably. There it is. It is. It, it 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 does assert that the node count is fine. It did check for the dashboard. It is. De it did deploy a dummy service to make sure that the proxy part work. It is now accessing the OMI service, as you can hear, as you can see here. So that worked all as well. Now he's probably doing the control node restart and make sure that this is working out as expected. Should be done in a couple of seconds. Now go on. The, the fun of live demos. Live demos, yeah. <laughs> so, so tell me a little bit, I saw BATS at the top. What What is BATS? Yes. Uh, that's just our integration test framework thing, basically. Um, well, well, why we choose this is because it makes it possible for even our non-developers to define test cases and uh, stuff they want to have end-to-end -end tested. So everyone is basically, I mean, that that's pretty easy, uh, pretty easy to read, right? Oh, absolutely. And so, so, yeah, and so we decided to go for this because everyone can read this test easily. And in the meantime, it's done. So you can see that the whole test is okay. Ran one test. This was successful. So, and we have this with all of our with our core features and main features that our solutions have. So every time we prepare releases and stuff, we spin dozens of Kubernetes clusters, run all of the tests throughout our CI. And um, yeah, can leverage K3S to make sure that really our tests are hopefully still passing, and that we do not uh, that we do not ship uh, broken applications to our customers. So, so far that's everything I had in mind. Um, it's uh, I probably missed something because I was three minutes too fast, but I hope you got some questions because that's all I had. Thanks, folks. And as already mentioned, if you want to get in touch with me, get me feedback ask me questions, whatever you want to do, here are all my contact details. So, uh, Manuel, that was, that, was, that was really awesome. I, the, I, I like how you're using K3S for CICD purposes. I'm, I'm actually writing a couple of blog posts on CICD uh, with different technologies. So I may, I may borrow some things there, really awesome. Yeah, if, uh, we're here. If you want to need, if you want to know more, I, I can talk about this very, very long. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll have you back on for another time to actually talk about CI/CD. I think that's, I think that'd be a, a really cool, uh, a really cool discussion. So I'm going to grab back the presenter because I actually was able to go through most of the questions while you were presenting. And I yes, just want to make sure that you showed you... off the links already. So which you did, which is good. So I'm going to grab the presenter <laughs> back. So upcoming classes next week we're doing our next week hey, next week ish uh, we're doing a managing SQL servers with servers of the Kubernetes I'm particularly interested in this because I did a did about 15 years in the .NET and Microsoft spaces working with SQL servers so that'll be interesting as well and a Kubernetes in Vault class coming up within SRE over at Boxboat and at any time if you want to register for these classes well you're listening to this one so you registered somewhere it's the same link rancher.com/slash Kubernetes masterclass up. Oh. In addition to that, uh, if you'd like to try out Rancher, uh, Rancher, the Rancher project, uh, you can go to rancher.com slash docs slash Rancher. Well, the link at the bottom there. Just take a screenshot. And thank you for today. Thank you, Manuel. And one last thing tomorrow. You. Uh, oh, you're quite, you're quite welcome. Like I said, thanks for, absolutely for the awesome presentation. Uh, tomorrow, 
uh, on the Ranch Cast at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. We'll be talking with Chris Carty. Um, he's a CKA and rancher, trusted ranch hand. Uh, he'll be talking about actually CI CD with Flux CD, uh, which is a GitOps operator for Kubernetes. And that'll be at 9 a.m. Eastern. You can catch it here or on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash the ranch cast. Well, yeah, don't, don't copy that one. Just go to slash C slash the ranch cast. Uh, there will also be mirrors on Mixer or Twitch, depending on what your corporate firewall blocks. Uh, with that being said, uh, we are... Uh, we are done for the day. Uh, check us out uh, on, uh, on Slack at slack.ranger.io um, and in traffic, of course, at, at Continuous. So thank you all for your time, and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Thanks. Bye-bye.